questions? Good evening or good day wherever you are in the world. I want to welcome you to New Moon Manifesting. I am Jana Grosscrest. And for the next hour, 45 minutes to an hour, we will be talking about this Leo New Moon energy. We will also talk about other planetary influences to support you in setting your intentions as well as helping you in manifesting. And then we will wrap up the call with a guided imagery meditation to help set your intentions or at least to get you thinking in the right place. For those of you that are, <clears throat> excuse me, those of you that are new to the call, I just wanna welcome you and thank you for participating. We've been doing this for over 12 years now, so it's been a long time. And I, I love the circle. I love the energy that it brings. I love that we connect from all over the world and we bring positivity and the tools to help us in manifesting more. For those of you who don't know me, I am, a master energy healer, quantum energy healer, as well as a retired tax accountant. And um, I love teaching people how to manifest more and I actually integrate money with that process to teach them how to create more abundance by understanding the energetic blocks that hold them back from money. So let's get started. I've got a little presentation. We will pop up here, maybe. There we go. And share and present and voila. We've got the Leo new moon. It is taking place tomorrow night at 1041 p.m. on the East Coast. So 741 here on the West Coast. And this is a highly creative, expansive energy. Now, the new moon is actually following the full moon. So it with the full moon, we integrate and we kind of reach the apex of whatever our intentions are. So typically we set our intention with the new moon. And then by the time we reach the full moon, we see direction or fruition or whatever, um, wherever we're at. But with this new moon, we're actually following the full moon. So we're actually looking at this in reverse and how we've, how we've grown, what things we've integrated so far and how we can carry those elements with us into this next energy, which is Virgo, because the sun and moon actually move into Virgo in the next couple of days. So we only have a couple of days to actually even work with this energy and make the most of it. And what we're doing when we move into Virgo is really anchor this into physical form. And um, this is a fire sign. So it's all about the ideas and the action steps and things that move us forward. So keep that in mind that we're quickly moving into the Virgo energy shortly after this. So um, whatever intentions you're setting, have them pretty much set by tomorrow night. So let's talk about the characteristics of Leo. Because it is a fire sign, it's highly creative, it's very expansive, it's bold, it's about taking action. So if there's a specific goal that you're working on that you're inspired to take action in a particular direction, go for it. Because this is the opportunity for you to tune into that higher realm of where that's leading you. Obviously we have our own idea of what action needs to be or the own step, our own steps that we think we need to follow. And then there's what I call inspired action. So with this Leo energy being highly creative and innovative, it's an opportunity for you to move in a new direction that actually guides you towards ultimately what your goal is. Think of the lion. This is about being magnificent and majestic and magnanimous. It's a very big energy. This one also has a lot of notes that support you on a personal level. And we'll talk specifically about those so you can look at those in your chart and find out what's taking place for you. This energy brings in inner vitality and new inspiration that moves you in a specific direction. So just even if you don't have an idea of what that is, just be open to the possibilities because we're planting new seeds. They don't always come to fruition with the time of the new moon. So we're just going to follow those little breadcrumbs and lead us towards ultimately where we want to go. Now, Leo is highly creative. It's fun. It's childlike. It gets those creative juices going. So this is a great time to do those creative project or artistic things that 
really inspire you and get you into that place of creativity and expansion. This new moon is all about courage. Again, the energy of the lion. And it's the courage for you to be you, to step into your full power. That means learning to live from a heart-centered perspective instead of what other people expect of you or what the world expects of you. This is about you tuning in to really what makes your heart sing. Now, this Leo energy is actually going to anchor in the solar plexus, but we're gonna bring in some heart-centered energy with the meditation and then plant those seeds in the solar plexus so that we can bring in that personal power and personal growth and help you step into whatever step, uh, action steps you need to take to actually get to that place. And then of course, as I mentioned, this is preparing us to have the practical integration with the Virgo new moon or the Virgo energy. So let's talk about self-love and self-care. This is a really big, big time to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And what does that look like, right? This can be as simple as, taking a couple of hours off or half an hour off and sitting down with a cup of tea and reading a book or going for a walk and getting out in nature so that you can clear your head and be in that in that space where you're able to receive higher, higher guidance so this energy really helps you tune into what lights you up what makes your heart sing what makes you feel impassioned what makes you feel creative as you're tuning into those things that's going to lead you in the direction that you want to create ultimately whatever you're manifesting. Again, anchoring this energy into the solar plexus. Often when we're breathing, we're only breathing in that upper third of our lung register. So we're gonna do some deep breathing to bring that energy down into the solar plexus, down to the base of the torso, so that you're really anchoring this in physical form. Otherwise, we're just in this upper register and just processing, over-processing with our heads. So we need to get into that heart, we need to get in the solar plexus and really pull that energy down to the earth. So with this Leo new moon, we have the sun, we have the moon, and we have Mercury. All of these are hanging out together at basically 27 degrees of Leo. So at 29 degrees, that's the last degree before it starts moving into the next house. So you want to be aware of where this is falling in your chart so that you can set those intentions and really master that. So the sun is about how you outwardly express yourself. It's the divine masculine. The moon is the divine feminine. It's that emotional side and that inner journey. And then Mercury is about communicating a new message. So you want to be aware of specific messages that are coming up for you. You may discount them. You may want to ignore them. I encourage you to be open because your higher self is guiding and directing you into or into what it is that you want to manifest. However, that doesn't always look the way that we think it should look. And so we need to be open of what those influences are. So here's a chart that we can look at. I pulled this one up. This person is a Leo and we have, oops, let's get this away. I don't know if I can move that. Yeah, I can. Okay. So we have, whoop go back. We have the sun and moon and Mercury over here hanging out, just getting ready to move into, um, into Virgo over here. And for this person, it's taking place in their eighth house. So the eighth house has to do with death and rebirth. It has to do with shared resources, inheritances, um, tax, the occult, sex, all those types of underworld things, that Scorpio type energy. So with this person, it's really looking at what is transforming for them because Scorpio and that eighth house is really about transformation. Now I want you to take a note here. So I made this line here and we've got this also at 27 degrees is where Mars is. And Mars is in Aries and Aries is all about who am I in the world? And Mars is about taking action. So there's some real push to take action with this new moon. It's a beautiful uh, sextile that's taking place, and it's really encouraging us to be open to the possibilities and really trust our heart and gut instincts with this. One other interesting point is halfway in between the two, at 27 degrees of Gemini, we also have the North Node. 
and the north node is directing us towards our destiny. So we've got, that's why I'm bringing up all these personal elements. We've got, we've got the sun, moon, and mercury that are telling us, what is it you really love? What are you really passionate about? What is it that you really want to create? What is fun for you? And as you're tuning into that, then you've got Mars coming up from behind saying, hey, yeah, let's take action on this. Let's move forward with it. This is really who you are. This is how you're expressing yourself. And then you've got the North Node that's supporting you going, yeah, we really need to create something new, something that's bigger, something that's outside of your comfort zone. So keep that in mind that even though we're trying to manifest something new and different, we are hardwired to fall back to our old way of doing things, the old patterns, our old thought processes, sticking in the old relationships. So it really does take a leap of faith and a lot of courage to move us out of that. And that's what Leo really does is it helps us to have that dose of courage to move us forward and at least taking a step. So just keep that in mind. All we're doing is we're taking a step and then we're gonna wait until everything energetically catches up with us and then we'll take the next step. So you wanna check your birth chart, find out what house these are falling in, the sun, moon, Mercury, as well as um, where Aries is, where Mars is sitting in Aries, and where the North Node is for you. Because Gemini and the North Node, this is about communicating a new message in a new direction. So keep that in mind as we are moving forward. All right, so with the Leo new moon, what sort of intentions should you be setting? First of all, you wanna be tuning into your heart's desires, living from that heart center place, trusting your gut instinct, and tuning into inspiration. So this is all about, okay, what ideas do I have and what really feels right to me? Because we can have all kinds of ideas and sometimes they're ego-driven and sometimes they're divine inspiration. So we need to be aware of what's taking place with this. How does that feel in my heart? How does it feel in my body when I think about achieving that specific goal? And that will help you to decide if it really is your heart that's moving you forward or if you're moving out of fear and through the ego mind. Then we want to align with our purpose, whatever that highest purpose of who we are, why we're here, and aligning again with our heart's desires. And then finally, making sure that we are taking the practical steps. So if there is action that you're inspired to take, make sure that you're taking it. And then as we move into Virgo, this is where we're gonna have the habitual elements that move us forward. So you can set a goal now, and then as we move into the Virgo energy, it's like, okay, what practical steps do I need to do that? So for example, if your goal relates to, um, to weight loss or to get in better health, what do I need to do to be in better health? Well, drinking half of my body weight in water in ounces every single day would be a great place to start. Exercising and walking at least two miles a day would be a great start. So the little habits that we create, even though we think, oh, there's not that much that's, that's going on from this little habit, those simple actions create the bigger results that we're looking for. For those of you who love essential oils like I do, here are a couple of my favorites for the Leo energy. Ylang Lang, this essential oil combined with geranium and um, Siberian fur applied over your heart, open up your heart. It helps you to love and trust more deeply. Ylang Lang is highly creative. It helps you attune with that childlike perspective because we all have emotional distress that's taken place and it's really shut us down. So how do we get to that place where we're dreaming again and dreaming big and tuning into those, that childlike curiosity that we had when we were children? Wild orange is the oil of abundance. It is it is uplifting, it is energizing, it really ignites your passion. And on a physical level, it stimulates serotonin production. So if you're having difficulty in processing difficult emotions or situations in your life, the citrus oils help you in, although they're energizing, they actually have a grounding effect because if you're highly active out of fear and overwhelm, then um, it will actually help ground you and bring you into your body so that you can make better choices. And then rose oil, this is one of my favorites. It opens up your heart to unconditional love. It helps you to love yourself and then be open to having other people love and support you. 
and helps you align with your heart's desires. So I'm gonna jump out of this and Oh yeah, Ylang Lang. I haven't I haven't combined the three together, so it would be a love potion. Even a Lang Lang geranium and um, one of the fur oils together is a complete love potion. So I want to open up the lines if anyone has questions about what's coming up for you, what um, what you're wanting to manifest. You can either virtually raise your hand or you can unmute yourself. We've got a small enough group. Questions about this new moon? I cannot have answered. <gasps> Barbara! Oh my God, my Leo lovely. I love you. Questions, what's coming up for this new moon with y'all? Yanni? Yanni Momani? I don't have any questions. I invited my very close friend Greg on and I want him to ask the question because he's going through a lot of stuff. Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> ask the question. But no pressure, right? <laughs> well, I'm a little I'm a little bit late. I just logged in probably like three minutes ago, but I mean I'll listen and if I have a question, I will ask. Okay. Sounds good. That's so cute. Thank you for inviting your friends. Hi, this this is Barbara. I just want to say, Jana, I love you so oh my God, I saw your picture and I was like, holy crap, it's better than ever. Wow. How are you, my little Leo lovely? Which is good. Good. That's great to hear. So is this a weekly class? This is a monthly because the new moon comes up monthly. every 28 and a half days. Okay. Okay. I wasn't aware. Sorry. My ignorance. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, you talked about getting the intention set by tomorrow night, and then you talked about making sure they were anchored before we entered um, Virgo, but you made it sound like it was going to be a really short time, not, well, you have all the way till Virgo. It didn't sound like that. So can you talk a little bit more about that, that compression? that appears to be absolutely i know nothing like a little pressure to get things happening so um there's 29 degrees in each one of the astrology signs and with this new moon we're ha it's happening at 27 degrees so it's the sun literally has to move two degrees before it's going to move into virgo so i think that actually that's i'm, I'm so lost on time right now i don't know about y'all but i just i i yeah i can't believe it's actually august I believe it's on Thursday that we move into Virgo. So if this new moon is happening at 1041 tomorrow, then we will have probably until Thursday, you know, to have that set. But you want to, you know, you want to definitely be thinking truly about what those intentions are so that you can sit down and meditate either tomorrow night or first thing on Wednesday morning to set those intentions and start moving forward with it. And then is Virgo going to slow us down or will that help carry us? Well, to me, it helps carry us because even though it's in physical form, obviously when we are trying to manifest something, it's on the etheric level and those thoughts come through our brain, just bing, 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 bing. And so when we have those thoughts, sometimes we think, oh, well, I'm never going to manifest this or I haven't manifest this because it takes a long time to create it in physical form. So as you are setting those intentions, Virgo, Virgo is the perfectionist. Virgo is about creating the healthy habits that actually get you there. So it's very organized. It's very methodical. It Ooh. can sometimes be over analytical. So you just want to be aware of where your thoughts are, that if you're thinking, oh, I should be doing this versus that, I want you to really tune into what's right for you. So that as you're tuning into that, it's not the head that's processing it, but it is your higher self that's directing you. Sounds like Virgo could be a help then. Absolutely. Here's your goals and here's what you do step by step. Exactly. Like I can, I'm a Capricorn. I like that kind of practical oh, stuff. Good. Yeah, I'm a Cappy too, so I get you. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Jessica. Hi, my name is Nancy. I'm... Um... I'm wondering is so what you're saying is that the intentions need to be set before the moon goes into Virgo, not the sun goes into Virgo. 
Is that right? The moon, right? Because we're setting the intentions. What happens is um, at 1041 tomorrow, the sun and moon will be together. And the, sun and the sun moves a lot more slowly than the moon. So the moon's going to be there and then it's going to start moving into, um, you know, Virgo probably the next day. Well, actually, I have an app on my phone and it says oh. that um, it'll be Thursday morning, August 19th at 4.20 a.m. And I'm in the Eastern time zone. So that would be 1.40, I guess, in Pacific yeah, time. Yeah, so you can see we only have literally a day and three hours. Exactly. <laughs> to set that intention before the moon has moved over. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a pretty quick trip. Definitely. Thank you very much. And for the person asking what direction should an Aries be manifesting? So it really depends on what house this is falling in for you. And if you haven't seen the short little tutorial I have about finding which house this is, that's where the direction should be. So going back to our, the house is on the inner circle. So you can pull your chart. And once you pull your chart, Let's go back here. Once you pull your chart, these little um, numbers in the middle are the houses. So you can literally do a Google search and say, okay, um, moon in, moon transiting Leo in eighth house and look up what that is. There's a ton of websites that have that type of information or moon transiting Leo in second house. And that would be all about money. It would be about, um, you know, what you love, all the tangible, tangible type sensuality type things, what you see, what you taste, what you feel, those types of things. So it really depends on where this is falling in your chart more than just saying, well, I'm an Aries. So um, it really depends on where that's taking place. Okay. Is it my phone that's breaking up or my computer, Ani? I can't tell. Am You're I not breaking up. I can hear you fine. I can hear you oh. fine too. All right. Okay. That's Must be me. <laughs> Must be me. <laughs> you never know, right? Like you never know. You mentioned to check our charts. Mine says new moon in 10th house. Should tensions be focused on this area and cover specific houses? So yes, that's where you wanna be focused on. This is taking place in your 10th house. This relates to your career. It relates to your inner authority. It relates to how you want to be known in the world, those types of things. So if there's a shift that's taking place with your career or something that you need to be aware of or a new direction that you're moving with your career, this is gonna be a great time to set those intentions. And also the higher perspective, not just your career, but how you want to be known in the world, like what legacy you want to leave, and that will support you in really manifesting more. All right, other questions? Just a real quick question. I, because I don't have the actual printed chart, I'm looking at like on a grid. So my, my, my ascendant is Leo, so that's the first house, right? Oh yeah, sister, you and me <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> What should I be focusing on, pray tell? Girl, it's all about you. <laughs> That's what I've been feeling like. <laughs> yeah, it's all about you, what it is that you want, how your needs are going to be met, how you want to bring yourself into this world, present yourself, get yourself out there, all of those things. It's really about who am I in the world and how do I, you know, get myself out there. So yeah, that has been my mantra. That's so on point. Thank you. Don't you love that? I love the validation, right? <laughs> yes, you will need to. So Jenna, I you were born. Hold on, just one sec. The question is, I don't know what time I was born. Um, if you don't know an exact time, if you have an idea, if you you know you can put in a, a guesstimate. If you have no idea, I usually put in noon. Um, the, the moon moves a lot faster. There are a few other things that, you know, could be tweaked if you did have the exact time. But just keep in mind that, you know, the more precise, the better. So if your mom's, mom says, oh, yeah, it was at like 5 p.m.-ish, then just put in 5 p.m. Um, but if you don't know, I usually put in noon for somebody that I don't know. All right. Who was the other question? 
Um, so I have, I don't really have like a, um, a chart in front of me. I was just on like, birth, like a, I was accessing a free birth chart and then I was able to like do a progress chart or a transit chart or whatever. But, um, the only thing I can see really on this is that my North node is in Leo. So what would that mean for a new moon if your North node is in Leo or does that, does that matter? Your North node is in Leo. Yeah. The natal. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'm like, well, the transit is in Gemini right now. So yeah, this is all about, this would be really good for you on really the new possibilities of where the bigger picture is going. Ultimately, what your destiny is, is the North Node. So if you're looking at that, it's an opportunity for you to say, okay, what things are supporting me and aligning me and the things that I really love? And what things am I just doing to go through the motions? Right? So when you're tuning into that, um, it's almost feel like there's a relationship that's holding you back because you're like, well, I kind of want to keep this relationship, but you know, there's these other things that are opening up. So as long as you're aware of kind of what's taking place subconsciously and just bring that to your awareness, you'll be able to make better choices that lead you in that direction instead of feeling like you're being held back by other people around you. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Tina, go ahead. And uh, you can unmute yourself wherever you are. There you are. Tina. I'll try to unmute you. I don't know if I can. They changed the system and I can't unmute the way that we used to. Tina, can you unmute yourself? Or you can pop your question in the chat box. While she's figuring that out, is there someone else? I feel like someone else has a question and you're like, oh, should I ask? Yes, you should. I have a question, Jana. Yes. And Tina's trying to figure it out. Love potion love. So you, when you mentioned the um any like fur oil with the geranium, um what is any kind of, I know white fur is fantastic, but any type of fur oil? Yes, so I we actually can't get white fur anymore, sadly. Oh <laughs> I got okay. it. Oh, you are okay. got it, right? So um, Siberian fur, Douglas fur, all of those help with the gen releasing the generational issues. And then mm -hmm. um, Ylang Ling helps us feel childlike and sort of in that giddy place. And then geranium helps us clear those elements of untrusting and feeling um, like we can't trust ourselves or other people. So yeah, you, you know the power of that. Wasn't it your friend that we gave that blend to and she had men falling over her right and left? Girl, we, will, we won't talk about it on this call. But anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tina? Hello. Oh, there you are. Okay, love bug. What's up? Yeah. Hi. So for probably the first time in my life, I don't really know what I want to manifest or set intentions for, but I do know that my job as a flight attendant is probably about to end because they're, you know, cutting lots of people. Right. And I, I don't really enjoy the job, so I'm really okay with them letting me go. And then there would be unemployment for a while. Um, and also the job is in France, but I'm currently in the U.S. taking care of two parents with broken bones. Oh, geez. And I have at least another month or six weeks before I have to go back to the job in France. But by then, it, you know, I might receive an email that they're letting me go. Right. And so I know I can imagine that what I want to set intentions about is a new wonderful job, but I have no further clarity than that. And I'm kind of feeling a bit lost. 
Okay, so honestly, what I'm feeling is you're so overwhelmed that having, mm. you know, starting to look at that new job and everything else is, is like, oh my gosh, but I've got parents that I've taken care of and all this other stuff that's going on around me. You just yeah. need to focus on the step in front of you, allow whatever, you know, sustenance that you're getting through unemployment or um, yeah. if they give you any sort of compensation to leave. Be grateful for that and mm -hmm. be okay with it. Like, don't feel like pressure of I've got to find a job because you know that newness of having a job and all of that is it is overwhelming enough. And I feel that mm -hmm. you've got enough on your plate that you just need to focus on you and allow okay. the universe to support you financially with these with these tools. Uh, well, and that makes sense because this new moon, um, I'm a Leo rising. Okay. And pretty sure it's in my first house um, and directly conjunct my Jupiter, which is in Leo in my first house. So all about luck and all about you. And I feel that this is so, an exploration where it's like, okay, I've done that. I didn't like okay. doing it. I'm done with it. What mm -hmm. do I love? And I think it's going to give you the time to really unwind that. And I keep hearing four months. So I don't know if at the four month point that you're like, Oh, okay. Now I know what I want to do, or something comes up in four months that okay. you know, have more flexibility and freedom. But I feel that this is really a downtime for you to take care of yourself. I mean, obviously, okay. you can take care of your parents as well, but this is an opportunity for you to really shift gears and get yourself in a new direction. Okay, even without knowing what the new direction is. <laughs> oh, that's the part of manifesting that's magical. Because if we if we knew the entire staircase, we may or may not ever take that journey. Our job is just to take the step in front of us. And so whenever we're manifesting something, it's like, okay, I lost my job, but I am receiving unemployment or whatever compensation. I'll accept that, even if it's not the full amount that you are used to having, figure out your budget so mm -hmm. you can make it work without going into grief of, oh my God, I don't have mm -hmm. what I used to have, right? Because that's a common thing. And then once you're mm -hmm. in that place, then it's like, oh, I can breathe again because I know I'm not going back to a job that I don't like. I know that something mm -hmm. new and amazing is going to open up for me. Let me tune into what I'm passionate about and, you know, get the creativity. Even if it means you're sitting home and coloring, you know, the adult coloring <laughs> books, like those types of yeah. things are going to help you tune into that, those creative juices that get you into that next step. So okay. From now, that puts us at the end of the year, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what comes out of that for you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. Other questions or comments before we go into meditation? All right. Let me, everybody looks like they're muted. You pop this back up. All right, hopefully you're in a place that you can be free from distractions. You can do this either sitting up or lying down, just tuning in to yourself. <clears throat> Let's begin with some deep breathing, breathing in through the nose and exit through the mouth. Breathing in deeply all the way down to the belly. And as you exhale, release any tension you're holding in the shoulders. Just gently rotate them up and back. Releasing all of that tension. Breathing in deeply. And as you breathe out, allow the chest to relax the upper body to be calm, supportive, but still relaxed. Breathing in all the way down to the base of the torso. And as you exhale, imagine your energy pushing down into the earth, breathing down into the earth. There's literally roots connecting you from the bottom of your feet and connecting you with the earth. helping you create 
and manifest and connect in physical form with Mother Earth. And bring your awareness to your heart, breathing through your heart, breathing in, and exhale, release. And with your focus on your heart, just notice what's taking place for you. If you're actually feeling your heart beating, maybe you're simply focused on the breath, breathing in and out through the heart. Maybe you're literally imagining yourself within your heart. This expansive chamber of unconditional love, magnetic energy. The heart is the most magnetic organ we have in our body. It's 60 times more magnetic than the brain. And it's from the heart that we manifest. And imagine there's this beautiful sunlight within the heart And be playful and childlike. <clears throat> and imagine you're taking a piece of the sunlight, a little sunbeam, and you're throwing it up through the crown of your head, and it's reaching up to the sun above. And it instantly connects with the sun, and the sun amplifies that sunbeam and sends it back to you through this golden thread. It comes back through the crown of your head and into the center of your heart. And you feel your energy begin to expand. The light within you is being amplified by the energy of the sun. And take another piece of light in this time. Imagine you're throwing it down through the earth. It's quickly moving through the core of the earth all the way down to the center connecting with the crystalline structure of the center of the earth. And Mother Earth bathes the sunlight with unconditional love. And she immediately throws it back up. The energy literally bounces back up like a trampoline coming up through the earth, up through your body and into the center of the earth. And you feel the energy begin to expand within your heart. You are the divine connection between heaven and earth. And you're here with an important life's mission. You're here with a purpose. You matter. And then this moment, just using your imagination, visualize yourself walking down a pathway towards a beach. And you can hear the waves crashing. It's a beautiful summer night. As you're walking down the path, you hear drums playing in the background. And as you come to a clearing, it opens up into the beach and you see the ocean. And ahead of you, there's a huge bonfire. People are playing, dr playing drums around it and you're mesmerized by the music. And you walk over and you join the group and everyone is so inviting, encouraging you to participate. They're so welcoming. And you instantly see yourself getting into the rhythm, moving your body, allowing yourself to release anything that no longer serves you any feelings of being unworthy or deserving, any feelings that I'm not enough.
anything else that's coming up at this time? Any emotions that you want to release? Any core beliefs? But you just allow the drums, the beat of the drums, to release that into Mother Earth. And the fire is dancing and radiating. You feel the heat of the fire. And you feel your body letting go, moving with the rhythm, dancing like a flame, allowing the energy of the Leo new moon to support you. And it's bringing in creativity. It's expanding your ideas, supporting you in taking action. This energy is magnanimous, magnetic, majestic, just like you, that you are regal and stand strong. That you allow the energy to move through your body and literally like a fire, it's dancing through every cell, activating releasing and call in the energy of generosity, of fun, of being curious like a child, exploring options, exploring yourself. Letting go of other people's perceptions of who you should be, just literally shake those off. Shed yourself of any responsibility. In this moment, it's just about you. And the music begins to die down. And everyone begins to sit down around the fire, tuning in to your heart's desires, supporting you in manifesting in physical form. As you bring your awareness into your heart, tune in to what you feel in this moment. No judgment, never trying to control it. Just simply observe what's taking place. What do I feel now? And as you observe what's taking place, maybe you have a specific intention that you're setting with this Leo energy Maybe you simply want to plant a seed in preparation as you do set your intentions. But imagine taking the energy from your heart and pulling it down into the solar plexus. Anchoring it with your personal power, love, Any other intentions or any other words that you want to bring in, just call those in now. Anchor them into your solar plexus. I am worthy and deserving. I matter. My goals are important. I easily reach my goals. I easily follow the steps my higher self is guiding me towards. Just tune in to this and other words or phrases that help you anchor your intention in physical form. And your cells are literally activated. They're fueled by the fire, the energy of the Leo, moon and sun. 
This is supporting you and manifesting more quickly. That the seed is going to open up and start to take root immediately. And again, there's no right or wrong way in doing this. Just simply observe what's taking place and be with the energy that you feel now. And imagine that you're attracting the resources that you need to support you. Maybe they're specific people. Maybe it's just the energy of your guides and your higher self. Maybe it's having time to yourself. Whatever resources you need right now, see yourself. Just visualize using your imagination. You're just like a magnet. It's coming to you now, supporting you in receiving better help, supporting you in receiving more abundance, supporting you in building better relationships. And take a deep breath in. And exhale, release. And bring your awareness back to your heart. And know that at any point in time, you can bring yourself back to a moment like this. Just using your breath and your imagination, tuning into your heart. And in this moment, express gratitude to your higher self for supporting you in this process at this time. Express gratitude to your guides and your ancestors who are supporting you. And most importantly, express gratitude to yourself for taking this time embracing this opportunity to help you transform. And as you bring yourself out of this activity, you may have specific messages or impressions or feel something specific. It's wise to write it down right away. It's kind of like a dream, you'll instantly forget it. And begin wiggling your fingers and toes, bringing your awareness back into your physical body, back into consciousness. I know it's not always fun, but we have to come back to reality sometimes. And when you feel your processing is open, go ahead, or when you feel your processing is done, go ahead and open your eyes. Anything interesting come out that anyone would like to share? Oh, Vicky, I just saw your message, Midheaven in Leo. So most likely it's, um, depending on how it's falling, this new moon could be in your 10th house about career relationship type things. Um, so yeah, I would have to look at your chart specifically to, to see that. Is everybody asleep? I don't hear snoring, so that's a good sign. I don't hear anything. I found myself exhausted in the middle of the drum circle, soaking up the love and the warmth. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I, I just feel that you've been on the go for so long that this this opportunity is going to give you a chance to breathe and look at life differently. So I look forward to seeing what comes out of that for you. Anything interesting come up? Everyone's madly making notes. All the messages that you got, Ayana. <laughs> it's like, I gotta do this. Oh, I love that. Forgiveness. I love that, Barbara. You know, that combination, the Ylang Lang geranium and white fur will really support 
in forgiveness too, because geranium will help you to let go of the hurt and the pain and suffering that are hard experiences and the betrayal. So it, it will be a great combination for you. Nobody wants to talk. You guys are so quiet today. I'll say something. Okay, love bug. So I just kept hearing continue focusing on yourself, building yourself up and executing the newly developed habits to come. Oh, I love that. So, so is Greg's real, his last name really Leo? No, he's, it's, that's half of his name, it's Leonard. <laughs> I was just like, oh, how, how apropos. How cool, right? how, no. How Leo <laughs> in the Leo new moon, I love it. <laughs> no, it's Leonard, yeah. I don't know what you mean by that, Alicia. There's no Leo. Okay, Leo's in everybody's chart, so it's gotta be somewhere in there. Are you saying there's no planets? There's no planets in your Leo? Alicia? She disappeared. I'll have to look at your chart, girl, because yeah, we all, we all have all 12 planets. Well, and I'm new at looking at my chart, but okay. there is just, there's no Leo on this. So I looked at it a few times and I thought, why is it missing? I'm wondering if it's just the place that I got my chart from. Well, it's probably not that. It's probably just learning how to interpret it. Okay. So um, if I don't have your birth information, send it to me and I'll email you what I see. And then you can look at your chart, what chart you pulled and... Sometimes that helps, right? Like if somebody looks at it and they're going, okay, this is what's taking place. Then you can look at your chart and go, oh, okay. So this Leo, Leo new moon is conjunct natal Uranus in second house. What should I be thinking about? Sudden change, <laughs> sudden change related to money and up-leveling your career, how you make money, setting up home base, those types of things. So yeah, is there, is there a lot of rockiness when it comes to making money in your life, Nancy? A lot of what, sorry? Um, is there a lot of sudden changes when it comes to your career or making well, money? I just am retiring um, from a 23 year teaching career and I'm intending to start a new business, yes, so. Okay, yeah, that's definitely supporting you because that's, uh, Uranus is all about sudden change, but taking on that higher level of um, communication and connecting you with your higher purpose. And then the second house is about making money. So it could be something, in fact, it feels like it's something related to teaching, but more on a spiritual plane. So I don't know if you, if you do like card readings or angel readings or something like that, but there's I've something been astrology. About I've been studying astrology for the last two years. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, it's, it's that higher level and helping people see money. You know, the money houses are the second, the sixth, and the 10th house. And it's a great place to help people focus on, you know, those houses plus 10th, I mean, plus um, North Node and Pars Fortuna will support you in helping them understand how to make money when it comes to astrology. And my, well, my North Node is in Leo too, so... Okay, so you're the actor, the actress, right? Like you want to put yourself out on center stage. Yeah, yeah except my, is, my son's in the 12th house, though, so that's what's hung me up all my life. The what? Say that again? My son is in the 12th house, so that's what's hung me up all my life. That I've never, I've not wanted to be seen. I've wanted to be hidden. So. Yeah, but that actually supports you on that higher spiritual plane, too. Right? Yeah, I know. Taking, it's just, I'm coming after my second Saturn return though. So it's like all yeah, time, right? Like it's time. It's time. I know. I can't <laughs> hide anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I look forward to seeing what comes out of that for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Molly McCord is really good. She does some, some great YouTube stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love Molly. She's, she's great to listen to. She always has incredible insight. Any other questions or comments? 
just nice to see you. It's been such a long time. I know. Where have you been? <laughs> We're here every month, day in, day out. <sighs> I know. Life is busy. That's been an understatement. <laughs> I can imagine. More mentally than physically. Ah, yes. A lot of stuff going on. Good stuff, bad stuff. I call it the Corona Coaster. Like you said before, I don't know what the day it is. It's That's how I feel sometimes. It's the Corona Coaster. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, good, Tina. I'm glad you enjoyed the meditation. It was very powerful. I never know what's going to come up. I kind of have insight of where I'm going to go with it, and then stuff comes up, and I just follow it. So, um yeah, there was a lot of energy that was bubbling up. Like I, I was literally feeling stuff coming up. So I don't know if anyone else was noticing that, but um, energetically there was like a lot of buried stuff that came out. Anyone else? Oh, yes, Elise. it's Barbara. Oh, Barbara? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I realized um, during the meditation that in my heart area was congested but i didn't even realize it until you know we were going through the actual process of it mm -hmm. so i want to thank you jana that was very helpful thank you so much love oh thank you so much i'm so glad you're here barbara yeah it's um it's easy for us to really tune out our bodies and when we do slow down and meditate it gives us that opportunity to allow what needs to come up or what where our awareness needs to go with our physical body and our energetic body so it's it's important for us to even you know breath work for five to ten minutes a day helps to bring us more into that place of mindfulness with our body all right well we will wrap up today and um i look forward to seeing you next month on our new moon call we'll be in virgo thank you all for joining us tonight and much love to everybody thanks for joining us bye for now bye jenna see you later honey see you tomorrow okay <laughs> bye bye everybody bye, everyone. thank you bye greg bye jenna Bye, everybody. Be well.